Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy, helpless from the effects of a paralyzer ray, are in a lab ship out beyond the Jupiter orbit. Sure gave us a stiff charge with that ray, Commander. It isn't even beginning to wear off. Yes, and every second we lie here, Rinker and Betts are getting farther away. What's that? That equipment over there. The, the equipment? But I disconnected it. Rinker must have hooked it up again. When that electrical charge builds up, this whole lab ship will be blown to pieces. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Wistful Wizard of Neptune's Moon. Attention, Space Patrol, prepare for invasion. Prepare for invasion. Hey, stop the whistle, stop the bells, hold everything. That's no invasion. That's a gang of Space Patrollers trying out their new Monoview Outer Space Helmets. This is Captain Dick Tufeld, Space Patrollers, right here to tell you all about the new and sensational Monoview Outer Space Helmet. The terrific helmet all of you can have for your very own. A whole foot high. It's got a sensational one-way eye plate that you can see out of, but nobody can see you. And when you look out that magic strata viewer, it's just like looking out at another planet. Everything has a strange and weird purple glow. It's built for real space patrollers, too. It has two full-size, real-for-sure-looking oxygen tanks and tubes printed on and a gleaming lightning flash hood. Now, just think of the fun you can have with a Monoview outer space helmet of your very own. And here's how to get it. Just buy a box of good hot Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and the instant or regular Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Wistful Wizard of Neptune's Moon. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are making a brief tour of inspection of the spaceship emergency repair base on Neptune's second moon. In the routine life of the maintenance crew on this remote base, even an official inspection is regarded as a welcome relief from monotony. Right now, in the small recreation hall, the crew is putting on an informal home talent show in honor of Buzz and Happy. The two space patrollers are watching with amazement as an amateur magician completes a baffling trick. <laughs> hey, this guy is great. What's his name, sir? He was introduced as Wistful Wilbur, the wizard of Neptune's moon. <laughs> he acts as though he didn't know what he was doing, but he's terrific. For my final trip, gentlemen, I'll need a volunteer from the audience. Will one of you men kindly come up here? Anybody. It won't matter because... Uh, I've never tried this trick before in public. <laughs> so, uh, Cadet, Cadet, uh, would you mind? Uh, me? Go ahead, Happy. Oh, okay, sir. Right up here, Cadet. What do you want me to do? Oh, just slide on on the bench. Sure, okay. And now, gentlemen, when I say the magic word, why, uh, the Cadet here will rise up in the air and stand there till I tell him to come down. Uh, now, uh, watch closely. Arturus Pazan, rise! Mm. Uh, What's uh, happening? Hey, hey, let me down. You see, the cadet floats in midair. Thank you. Uh, cadet, you may descend. Smoking oh, rockets, what a sensation. Well, gentlemen... I got to get back to the work at the shop, so that concludes my part of the performance. Later that evening, in another part of the repair base on Neptune's second moon, two men wait in a neat, well-equipped shop. Vets, you can't be serious about this fellow, Wilbur, the... Uh, what's his name? Crawford. Wilbur Crawford, I tell you, he's the one... What you've described is impossible. You've been taken in by a few sleight-of-hand tricks and optical illusions. 
He's just a good amateur magician, nothing more. Linker, haven't you heard of telekinesis, the control of physical objects by the human mind? Sure, the theory is hundreds of years old, but it's never been proved. Yeah, just the same. There are lots of intelligent scientists who believe it can be done. Yeah, maybe. But I'll have to see it to believe it. You saw it tonight in the recreation hall. A trick, an illusion. All right, have it your way. But you'll have to admit that Wilbur Crawford would be mighty useful to us if he can move objects without touching them. You seriously think he could take that microfilm from Lauren Wilson without Wilson being aware of it? That's right. And without being suspected. Mm. Suppose Crawford won't agree to try it. Leave that to me. Take me, son. Let me do the talk. <laughs> the whisper wizard of Neptune's name. I'm sorry it took me so long to get here, gentlemen. I had a hard time getting away from the gang at the rec hall. Ah, that's all right, Crawford. Hey, nice act you put up. Oh, it's nothing, really. But you gentlemen didn't come here to discuss the magic acts, did you? Uh, you said something was wrong with some of the instruments? Yes, uh, that's right, Crawford. The calibration is all off. The calibration? Why, uh, that's impossible. I checked them carefully on the testing equipment right here. Yes, Crawford. The calibrations match perfectly when you run it. Unconsciously, your mind controls those instruments. They register exactly what you as a skilled machinist know they should register, even when they're out of adjustment. Uh, Let's face it. You have a strange and rare power that can move solid objects just by thought. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes, but uh, please don't tell the foreman. I-, I wouldn't be able to work here. Harper, how would you like to work for Mr. Rinker and me? You mean you're willing to take a chance on me? Sure. We'll take you to Neptune tonight. We can fight a Terra in style. In a space flight passenger special. That sounds wonderful. Terra. Is that where your headquarters is? No, no, but uh, we'll meet you there. There's a little side job we'd like to have you do on the way. It's uh, right up your alley. Oh? Uh, you see, uh, Mr. Betts and I have been cheated by a, a man named Wilson. Lauren Wilson. Mm. He has something that belongs to us. Why don't you go to the space patrol? No, that wouldn't do any good. Wilson's too clever. If you can get our property away from Wilson without any trouble at all. What do you mean? You'll be aboard the same passenger ship as Wilson. Without any risk at all, you can concentrate on Two days later, in a central office on the man-made planet Terra, Commander Corey listens gravely as a prominent industrialist tells a strange story. At a nearby desk, Cadet Happy takes notes. Those are the facts, Commander. The reel of microfilm definitely disappeared while I was aboard the space flight express between Neptune and Terra. And the sealed can containing the microfilm was in your inside coat pocket at all times. Yes, Commander. You say this microfilm contained a detailed description of a new ion exchange process. It's a formula that's worth millions, man. It would revolutionize manufacturing in several basic industries. Is there a possibility that someone outside of your trusted associates knew about this process? One man may know about it. But you can be sure he wasn't on that spaceship. He could have an agent. Who is this man? His name is Anton Rinkler. I've learned he's on Terra. I uh, have the misfortune to have some dealings with him a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. What kind of dealings? He operates a lab ship, a pretty well-equipped one. I hired him to do a little field work for me. I fired him when I found him analyzing my private papers instead of chemicals. Well, there's one way to find out if Rinker knows anything about the missing microfilm. How, sir? Ask him. What's his address? Oh, bet you expecting anyone? No. Maybe it's a, a, a client. Maybe you'd probably better step into the next room. Sure, Mr. Rinker. Leave the door, Jarvetz. If this turns into a business deal, I'd like to have a witness. All right, sure, Rinker. I get it. Oh, yes, gentlemen? I'm looking for Anson Rinker. That's me. Something wrong? I'd like to ask you a few questions. I'm Commander Corey. Uh, yes, Commander. Come in. Thanks. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. Rinker... Do you know Lauren Wilson, the manufacturer? Uh, yes. Nothing happened to him, I hope. He was robbed. Oh? Well, surely you don't think that... If I... you know nothing about the robbery, then you wouldn't object to taking a brainograph test. A brainograph test? Now, see here, I guarantee here. that we'll ask you only one question. I'll tell you what it is right now. Do you have any knowledge of the theft of a roll of microfilm belonging to Lauren Wilson? Now, will you come down to headquarters and submit to that one question on the brainograph? Well, this comes as somewhat of a shock as being suspected of such a crime. I would like to think about it. You've got to get Mr. Rinkle out of this. 
But if that microfilm is really Mr. Rinker's and not Mr. Wilson's, the brainograph will prove it. Don't you see? Wilson and Corey are in a conspiracy. Wilson will use his money and influence to show that he's just the victim instead of the real thief. And you'll be arrested along with poor Mr. Rinker. But I didn't do anything wrong. I was only helping Mr. Rinker get his own property back. Just try to prove that. Look, we've got to stop Corey. But they're armed. Now, yes. Yeah. But I think you could do something about them. Mm-hmm. Not about it. You, you want me to... Right. Now, stop. Think. How about it, Mr. Rinker? Are you coming with us? I'll uh, ask my partner. Pets, should I go along? I don't think it'll be necessary, Mr. Rinker. Thank you, Bess. I'm staying here, Commander. You had your chance to come willingly, Rinker. You can both cover it, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, my ray gun's gone. And yours is gone, too, isn't it, Commander? However, Mr. Betts is armed. Get right. Rinker, Hap. Let him have it. That's going to be right. Ah, splendid work, Betts. You, too, Crawford. You disarm them from clear across the room. Now, come on. Let's get to our ship and blast off while Corey and the cadet are unconscious. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Ready, Captain Tussauds? Got your helmet? Helmet set. Eye plate in place? Check. Oxygen tanks go up? Check again, Space Patroller. Then helmet's on and let's go. Yes, sir, Space Patrollers. We're off on a trip to the Purple Planet. How do we get there? Just by putting on our Monodew Outer Space Helmets. And, gang, when you put on your own space helmet, you'll be looking out on another world. A weird, strange Purple Planet. You can look out, but that magic one-way eye plate won't let anybody else see in. The Monoview Outer Space Helmet is a whole foot high. It fits just anybody, and it's equipped with two full-size, honest-to-goodness-looking oxygen tanks printed right on, and a neat lightning flash hood. It comes in real space colors, too. Red, yellow, green, and black. Yes, it's sure terrific, so you better get yours right away. Just buy a box of Good Hot Ralston. Then with your name and address. Send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston or regular Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, the wistful wizard of Neptune's moon. Wilbur Crawford, a precision machinist, possesses the rare power of controlling the movement of objects by sheer thought. Through trickery, Crawford has been persuaded to use this strange talent to steal a microfilm description of a valuable chemical process from Lauren Wilson, a prominent industrialist. When Wilson's suspicions led Commander Corey and Cadet Happy to the apartment of Anson Rinker, chief conspirator in the theft plot, the gullible Crawford was induced to disarm Buzz and Happy by means of his weird control over matter. Then Rinker's partner, Betts, drew a ray gun, rendered the space patrollers unconscious, and the three men escaped. It's now an hour later, and Buzz and Happy are shaking off the effects of the ray gun. You know one thing, Hap. Rinker is behind the theft of Wilson's chemical castle. Yeah, and that magician Crawford must have done the actual stealing. Yeah, we won't find a solution standing here talking. Rush back to headquarters and send out an all planets alarm for the three of them. Meantime, far from the regular space lanes, a spaceship blasts through the void. Two men watch the rear view scope anxiously, while the third sits in moody silence. Finally, Wilbur Crawford raises his head. I've been thinking it over, Mr. Rinker. I don't want to run away. Don't be foolish, Crawford. You realize what'll happen if the space patrol finds you? I don't care. I'm willing to take my chances with the space patrol. Look, I know you don't like being a fugitive, but don't worry. We sell Wilson's chemical process. We can hide out in style the rest of our lives. Wilson's process? Then you were lying to me. I wasn't getting back something that belonged to you after all. I guess I gave it away, Rick. You're sorry. Now, it's time our wizard here got wise to himself anyway. Crawford, you've got a talent we could use. So we used it. You'll never use it again, and neither will I. Oh, I think we will. You've got a younger sister, I believe. Sister? I don't know what you're talking about. Your sister Verna, a math teacher at Lowell City High School on Mars. Lovely girl. Plans to get married next summer, I understand. What's my sister got to do with this? Nothing. Except that I'm going to contact one of my men on Mars and suggest that he uh, look after Verna. You leave her alone, do you hear? Now just behave yourself and cooperate with Mr. Betts and me and nothing will happen to your sister. What do you say, Crawford? 
What are you going to do with me? For the time being, we'll stay out here beyond the regular lanes. Then we'll go to Mars and transfer to my lab ship. By that time, the space patrol will figure we're headed toward one of the outer planets. Then uh, we're going to hide out on Mars, eh? No. We'll head for Mercury. We'll leave Mars as soon as we can. You aren't going to try to land in Lowell City, are you? Of course not. My lab ship is several DUs north of the city, near the old bauxite mine. You don't have to worry about that, Crawford. I'll just do what you're told, and you'll keep your sister in good health. Yeah. Turn on the space phone. Bets will put through that call our man in Lowell City. Okay. Hey, what are you talking about? The space phone's already on. You just clicked the switch yourself. I did? Yeah, I guess I must have. Funny how an action gets to be automatic. Blinker aboard Space Cruiser NP. In Space Patrol Headquarters on Terra, Commander Corey gives Cadet Happy a printed copy of a space of own conversation picked up by the monitoring station. Hmm. Well, where was the spaceship that was sending this? 400,000 DUs from Terra, 70 degrees above the plane of our orbit. What's our next move, sir? I've already assigned three of our Mars agents to guard Crawford's sister, Werner. We'd better be getting to the spaceport. He's going after Rinker, huh? I figure we've got time to reach his lab ship north of Lowell City before Rinker gets there. We'll give him a surprise party. What about our ship? Suppose there's no place to hide it near the mine. We won't try to hide it. We'll pick up a pilot in Lowell City and have him drop us off near Rinker's hideout. Come on, Happy. The Martian sun is low on the horizon when a private cruiser blasts into the thin atmosphere and heads for a gouged and furrowed area north of Lowell City. After a careful check in all directions, Anson Rinker sets the cruiser down in the red dust close to a lab ship. In an aft compartment of that ship, Cadet Happy presses a sensitive instrument against the bulkhead while Commander Corey slowly regulates a dial. Holding the ship now, that was the hatch closing. When did we jump in? I want to find out for sure whose side Crawford is on. We're blasting off. Just make yourself comfortable here in this compartment, Crawford. Wait if you like. <laughs> A long way to Mercury, the vector with us. Well, why can't I go up to the control compartment? Because Mr. Rinker thinks you'll be better off back here where you can't see the end. That's something wrong, Rinker? Why do you? Well, then let's get back to the control. Well, the ship's okay. It's on automatic. But the space patrol's onto us. Huh? I just got a space phone message from a man who was to pick up Crawford's sister. That's the space patrol is guarding her. Our man was almost captured. I don't, don't get it. How'd they find out where we were going to? Uh, this wonder boy here. Sure, he turned our space upon transmitter on when we were in the other ship. I might have known it. Drop it, I ought to not... Better not bet. The space patrol knows everything now. You don't have a chance. I'm not giving up that easy. They don't know everything. They'll be looking for the lab ship. Now, what is... Hold it. Huh? Don't let Crawford know what we're going to do. With that remote control mind of his, there's no telling what he can do. Well, I'll just fix that. There, he can't do anything when he's unconscious. Now, here's what you... It's working now, huh? Yeah, I'll turn up the game. That little scout you pulled both of us. Yeah, sure I will. Put him under with him. Just leave him in that. Uh-huh. But we'll make sure he won't give us any more trouble. There are a lot of chemicals in the lab department, enough to pull this ship apart. Yeah, I think we'll rig up something off the ship after we get away. And I know just the guy at the time the explosion come on. Those murdering rats. Now's the time to get away, Happy. They know this lab layout. We don't. If you rush them now, they may try something desperate. Moments pass. Tedious moments that seem like hours. Then through the sonic detector, Buzz and Happy hear voices again. Now's the time to cut loose of the scout shot. Not yet. Put a few more hundred DUs us Mars. All right, Henry. Let's get to the lab compartment. Bring the sonic detector along. Yes, sir. In here, Henry. Shut the door. Is this what they're going to blow their ship up with? What they plan to use. This device here builds up an electrical charge very gradually and at a steady rate. But it reaches a certain intensity... Charges released into these chemicals. Wow. Sort of a time bomb. Exactly. Pull that switch, Happy. Yes, sir. Now let's work our way up to the control compartment and take care of that. 
But isn't it about time, Ranker? Yeah, we might as well get going. I'll go back to the lab and boost the current a little. Well, that's been worrying. What if you miscalculate? I know what I'm doing. I'll readjust the charge so we'll have half an hour to get clear of the ship. But it's in the corridor. I heard it, too. It's rough, but it's not too. I doubt it. Well, look, you open that door fast. I'll be ready with the paralyzer ray gun. Okay. Ready? Now! Commander, they've seen it. You're too late, Corey. <laughs> Nice going, Rinker. That yeah, was close. Well, Crawford's going to have company during his last moments anyway. Yeah. The commander-in-chief, no less. And his cadet. Moments later, Rinker and Betts, far out in space, are in their tiny scout ship. And in the doomed lab ship, Buzz and Happy are regaining the use of their vocal cords, even though the paralyzer ray still numbs the rest of their body. Well, at least we got off better than Crawford did. They must have slugged him. Look at his head. He's out cold. Well, we ought to be able to move in a few minutes, Hap, then we'll get to the controls. What's that? The equipment over there. The equipment? Uh, but I disconnected it. They hooked it up again. That electrical charge builds up. This whole ship will be blown to pieces. Smoke and rockets by the looks of those sparks. Uh, well, it won't be long now. Uh, Commander, Crawford's coming, too. Mm -hmm. Crawford. Crawford. Uh, yes. What happened? Crawford, do you hear that? It's a time bomb Rinker sent. And if you don't get up and pull that switch, we'll be blown up. I can't move. Oh, sure. They gave you a blast with a paralyzer ray, too. Crawford, there isn't much time left for any of it. I know. And I want to get it all off of my chest. I stole that microfilm from Wilson, but I didn't think it was rightfully his. That's the truth, honest. I believe you. How did you do it? Rinker and that's called it telekinesis. The power of the mind to control matter. Crawford, try it now. Try it on that switch. Switch? What switch? A segment at the bottom of the control panel. You'd better hurry. Quite happy, but concentrate. Hey, you did it. You did it, Crawford. Elsewhere on their tiny scout ship, Rinker and Betts cruise on low power, waiting for a distant flash that will tell them that Buzz, Happy, and Crawford have been destroyed. You must have miscalculated, Rinker. The, the ship should have blown up by now. I don't understand it. Hey, Rinker. Look, the rear view scope. There's a spaceship. Confounded bets. Why weren't you watching? Look, I've been looking for the explosion. The lab ship. Our lab ship. Now, don't get panicky. We can probably outmaneuver them until Thacker gets here for Mercury. Yeah. What's wrong? The controls won't respond. Do something, Rinka. Corey's almost close enough to pull us in with the magnetic holding field. What's the matter with these controls? Commander Corey aboard lab ship ML-284. Holding Anson Rinker aboard scout ship. Cut your power. Corey, you're right. What are we going to do? Better cut your power, Rinker. Try to fight the magnetic holding field. You'll pull the skin right off that little space boat. He's right. He's right. Do what he says. Yeah. All right, Corey. You win. But if these controls hadn't fouled up... They didn't wouldn't... foul up, Rinker. They worked beautifully. They were operated from this ship. What? That's right, Rinker. And here's the fellow that helped capture you. The wistful wizard of Neptune's moon. You can have this wizard's business. From now on, I'm just a plain... An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, space patrollers, what's that? What's going on over at the Browns house? Uh oh, I know now what the trouble is. Jimmy's got his monoview outer space helmet on. Hi, Captain Tufel. <laughs> Even my own dog doesn't know me with my new helmet on. Just got it this morning. Sure is swell. That's right, Jimmy. You can see out. But nobody else can see in. Fool three of my pals are ready today. Yes, that two-way mirror strat of yours will do it every time. Feel like a real spaceman, too, with oxygen tanks, breathing tubes, and lightning flash hood printed right on. Yes, and you look like one, too. Now, how about you, space patrollers? I bet you'd all like to have one, wouldn't you? Well, all it cost you is 25 cents. That's right, only 25 cents and the top from a box of instant Ralston or regular Ralston. Yes, sir, gang, just a quarter and a box top for the sensational, terrific, full-size, monoview outer space helmet. So buy a package of good, hot Ralston today. And then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and the instant or regular Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> 
Attention, all space patrollers. All space patrollers. Attention. This is your commander with big news that you've been waiting for. News about the Name the Planet contest. <laughs> Next week, you'll hear the name of the grand prize winner in the Name the Planet contest. Yes, in just seven days, you'll know the name of the space patroller who wins my rocket ship and $1,500 chance. And who knows, it may be you. So stand by and be sure you're listening to Space Patrol next week for the name of the grand prize winner in the great Name the Planet contest. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Commander Corey at the controls of the Terra 5 pilots the ship close to a strange, disc-shaped object floating above the planet Venus. Cadet Happy is on the disc in a spacesuit, reporting to the commander by spacophone. Can you make anything out of those controls and instruments, Happy? Well, no, sir. They're, they're nothing like you'd find in a spaceship or artificial satellite. And besides, they're not even connected. The disc seems to be defying gravity. Now, don't touch anything, Hap. You see, these, these wires are just hanging loose. It looks like they've been yanked away from... Hey, Commander, what's wrong? The disc is falling. Falling toward Venus. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story in the Claw of Venus when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Baylor Kovach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! <laughs> this is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles reporting on the first airplane with swept back wings used in the U.S. Air Force, North American's F-86 Sabre Jet Fighter. In a moment, we'll hear from George Welch, the famous test pilot on the Sabre Jet. The Sabre is 37 feet long, weight 8 tons. Wings are swept back at a 35-degree angle. Top speed, more than 650 miles per hour. Now, George Welch recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. I was lucky enough to fly the F-86 Sabre jet for the first time. The first time up or the 50th, every flight is important. That's why I have to keep in top shape. I like to eat good food with lots of energy in it. Rice checks and wheat checks meet that test, and they taste exactly right. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal puffed or flaked contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from George Welch, Joe Lynch, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. And here's big news. Inside of checks, you now get a thrilling new Space Patrol trading card. Flip them, collect the entire set of 40. Free Space Patrol trading cards inside of rice checks and wheat checks. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.